Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen with Alpha City News. This week's top stories. Subterranean goes down for the count. Tricky Dick tells some hard truths. Rao and Zero team up for a takedown. Red Cape gets lost in the past, stops traffic in the present, and more. From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Restaurant Row was rocked by fire for the second time in as many months this past Monday as the ceremony marking the beginning of the rebuilding of Basidion, the restaurant owned by Barker Clowey and John Mushroom Man Maldif was disrupted by an attack, orchestrated by Maldif's partner turned enemy, the Subterranean. The small midday ribbon cutting event, attended by press and fans of both Clowey and Maldif, seemed to be going swimmingly, when what felt like a small earthquake began. In moments, a hole opened in the center of the lot where Basidiom had stood previous to the fire which destroyed it, out of which a host of subterrans, not seen above ground since the early 1980s, swarmed. The subterrans, squat, made of stone, with cracks of glowing magma, surged toward the astonished crowd as the subterranean himself, still striking in appearance, though somewhat shrunken from his heyday, rose out of the hole on a stone pillar. The lord of the subterrans descended and strode towards the crowd, but appeared nonplussed when he saw that John Maldif, far from cowering at the appearance of his enraged former comrade, had stepped forward to meet him. Bystanders heard Maldif pleading with the subterranean, whom he referred to as Simon, to stop whatever he was doing so they could just talk while the villain responded with stentorian proclamations about Maldif's betrayal. After a few moments of back and forth, the subterranean raised his arms and began a prepared speech, the rising intensity of which was mirrored in the growing motion of the ground beneath the crowd's feet. Maldif's shoulders fell, Clowey later said, as he reached into a pocket of his coat and threw a handful of powder into the subterranean's face. As this happened, four figures stepped out of the watching crowd, revealing themselves to be Ice Pimp, Burnout, the Earth Mover, and Hydro Blast. As the subterranean's eyes rolled back into his head and he fell backwards, arms still outstretched, the four Hero Guild members herded the Subterrans back to the hole from which they had emerged, with the Earth Movers sealing the hole after the last had vanished back under the city. The insensate Subterranean had his stone armor removed, revealing the near elderly form underneath. A city emergency crew was called, and the Subterranean was taken to West Side Fellows Hospital and admitted under the name of Simon Stone, all while under the watchful eye of John Maldif. Intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston managed to get a quick word with the Earth Mover, who said that Mr. Maldif had approached the ACPD and the Hero Union with the idea that the subterranean would act to disrupt anything associated with the reopening of the destroyed restaurant and asking for their help in making sure no bystanders would come to harm. Simon Stone, having inhaled a large dose of dried mushroom, remained entranced for almost 24 hours. When he returned to his senses, and having suffered no ill side effects, he was arrested on a number of charges, both outstanding from his past and from the events of the day before. John Maldif could not be reached for comment. Richard Tricky Dick Noxon spent the week campaigning in the Battle Hill neighborhood of the Heights and in Northside. He appeared in a number of living room gatherings and town hall meetings, discussing how he planned to streamline city spending while improving the city services to the lower class. 
It was a hard sell in the predominantly upper-class neighborhoods, but Noxon pointed out that, as his plans would affect everyone in the city, everyone deserved the chance to be informed and to question him about them. Mr. Zero and Edison Rao, working in concert, managed to lay hands on rogue scientist Ilgren Hauser Saturday. Edison Rao had been tracking the scientific ne'er-do-well for more than a month, following Hauser's escape from a courthouse jail cell, where he left a bomb-laden robot double in an attempt to kill the judge, prosecuting attorney, and Rao himself. Mr. Zero was consulting with Rao to compare notes, possibly relating to Zero's investigation into the shadowy machinist, when Rao was informed that Hauser was trying to break into Maryvale Penitentiary, no doubt to secure the release of Gorilloid, the ape with the brain of a robot. As both Hauser and Gorilloid are obsessed with creating huge mutant primates, Rao and Zero raced to the penitentiary on Rao's magno boards arriving in time to face Hauser before he breached the walls of the high security section of the prison. Though Hauser had mutated the guards into monstrous four-armed ape creatures, Rao had come prepared, using an ultra-low-frequency anti-mutation emitter to counter the guards, while Zero made short work of Hauser himself. The guards were treated for rapid mutation trauma, while Hauser, having been stripped and tested in every way possible to make sure he was not another robot double, was placed into the very cell he had been so dedicated to avoiding. Traffic in Bakersley was brought to a standstill early Thursday afternoon when an office building at the corner of Cormorant Avenue and Bacon Street found itself under attack by the Red Cape. Standing on the sidewalk opposite the Cormorant Avenue side of the building, the Red Cape fired multiple shots from his jet cannon at the structure, shattering windows and threatening to bring the entire building down if Adventure Incorporated didn't face him in a final battle. Adventure Incorporated, led by Dr. Simon Vale, was one of the premier heroic teams of the middle of the century, fighting numerous battles against communist aggression during the mid-1950s when they were based out of the Vale Scientific Building, which, prior to its demolition in 1972, had occupied the lot on the corner of Cormorant and Bacon. Red Cape had been a regular foe of Adventure Incorporated until his capture and incarceration. The agent provocateur, real name Virgil Willis, spent most of the 1960s and 70s in federal prison and ceased villainous activities after his release, until Thursday, that is, when the now 92-year-old began his assault. Mr. Willis had apparently been allowed to wander away from his assisted living home and under the impression that he was still a young man, had secured a costume and jet cannon hidden for more than 60 years and headed to Cormorant Avenue, not remembering that Adventure Incorporated and even the building they called home no longer existed. Police managed to calm Mr. Willis only after the arrival of James Knuckles McKinley, the last living member of Adventure Incorporated who helped Willis to understand what year it was. McKinley, after assuring the building manager that the Vale Institute would cover all repairs to the building, helped Virgil Red Cape Willis to return to his home. Only minor injuries due to broken glass were reported. Several months ago, a phenomenon popularly called the Burst occurred as the result of Empyrean's victory over an other-dimensional creature known as the Deep One. Some who witnessed the blaze of unearthly light found themselves in possession of occasionally disturbing abilities, and a call was put out by Alpha City Health Services to allow Empyrean, Presto the Witch, and the Red Warlock to ameliorate any effects suffered by witnesses. While most Alpha citizens who came forward for treatment were returned to normal with no serious side effects, some were, unfortunately, harder to cure. These people suffered a variety of different problems, 
but all saw their skin turn a peculiar shade of livid purple, and were being housed together in a dormitory while the heroes and the faculty from Eisner University's Department of Thalmic Studies, Induced Mutation, and Extra-Dimensional Energy sought a full cure. This dormitory was assaulted last night by a group calling themselves the Children of the Deep, who all possessed the same bluish-red skin tone as the unfortunate housed there. The Children of the Deep all displayed the ability to cause horrific hallucinations in the guards and doctors on duty, incapacitating all of them before any alarm could be raised. The few employees still able to speak were discovered when the next ship came on duty, giving various descriptions of the attackers, and all repeating the phrase, The Deep is Rising. The actual rooms used by the patients were found to be empty, some showing signs of struggle, leading investigators to believe that at least some of the patients did not leave voluntarily. ACPD is asking that any Alpha citizens who catch sight of any purple-skinned individuals, please inform them right away, or get in touch with us here at ACN by emailing alphacitynews at gmail.com. Big Weird Joe found himself hailed a hero outside his normal stomping grounds in Floptown Friday when a half-baked plan by the agglomeration started a cross-town brawl between the two. The agglomeration, real name Wendell Abernathy, was trying to steal quarters out of a parking meter in the financial district when he was spotted by police. Abernathy was ordered to halt and responded in his normal way by absorbing the police officer into his normally sickly frame. Unfortunately, Abernathy's lack of control over his agglomeration ability led to his also absorbing three other passing citizens and sparking a panic amongst onlookers. As more police responded, the agglomeration tried to escape by using his strength, augmented by the mass of the various citizens inside, to break through police lines, and once again inadvertently absorbed even more innocents. As the now 12-foot-tall agglomeration careened down Coin Street, stumbling from wall to wall in a display of absolute minimal control, Big Weird Joe came upon the scene. Joe, walking across town in his kilt, goggles, and fur shako to the only store in the city that still sells his favorite brand of gum, found himself stepped on by the mass of stumbling humanity. Joe, enraged by the crumpling of his shako, ran after the agglomeration, taking a running leap to plant a size 18 combat boot into the small of its back. And so a battle covering almost ten blocks began, with cars thrown, the agglomeration using Joe as a bat to knock the ornamental globe from Worldwide Trading's entrance into the river, Joe tearing up power lines to electrocute the agglomeration, and many insults hurled by both. When the two combatants, seemingly evenly matched, fetched up near McKay Bridge, sudden inspiration struck Big Weird Joe. By this time, the agglomeration had absorbed nearly 15 people and stood twice as many feet tall, but with each addition, its control of itself seemed to falter. In an unexpected move, Joe hurled himself into the very stomach of his enemy and allowed himself to be agglomerated. This proved too much for the half-baked villain, who, losing all control, de-agglomerated back into its individual components, with Joe and the unconscious Abernathy in the middle. The newly freed citizens were quick to thank Joe, describing being part of the agglomeration as just disgusting. One of that many happy citizens even brought Joe a whole box of his favorite gum. Careful listeners to Alpha City News will have noticed that we no longer have Heredry Industries as a sponsor, and a few of you have taken the time to send us questions about why. Well, the fine people at Heredry chose to end our advertising partnership because we refused to break the law on their behalf, by not mentioning Heredry's former owner, 
the Magnetic Emperor. Since the capture and incarceration of the Magnetic Emperor, Peridri has been under a League of Nations order to include the terms no longer under the control of a supervillain or sorry for all the evil we were party to in all advertising for the next 20 years. While some companies sponsored by Heredri have been happy to find ways to work around this order, Alpha City News is not among them. Even in the face of threatening letters from the Heredri Board of Directors, which included the phrases, Your children's children will feel our wrath, and Those who control magnetism control the universe, including you, Worm, we were unwilling to compromise and so our partnership was brought to an end. To show that there are no hard feelings, we here at Alpha City News are providing one last tagline, free of charge. Heredry Industries, where we try not to be evil and fail. And in this week's Super Combat Scorecard, The Legion of Odd took a jaunt to the cartoon universe, home of Legion member Mini Moose, to stop the acetate ban from wreaking havoc there. Though Mini Moose was able to see old friends and teammates, the battle left him on our side of the dimensional gate, once again exiled from his home. The Infinite Kids from the Neo Deity City of Amazingville appeared in Alpha City to help boy photographer Johnny Munson fight a group of Auntie Agony's Lady Destroyers. The Infinite Kids summoned their protector, the Forever Man, to help. The Bowery Legion followed up last week's scuffle with the School for Scoundrels by discovering, and leading police to, Headmistress Payne's Secret Crime School. Payne was arrested. Empyrean stopped Thundercloud from covering the United States in rain. Captain Stupendous and the High Frontiersmen stopped an incipient breakout amongst the Gatan prisoners, waiting for transfer to Jewel Star League Jail. A Flower and Jackie Quick teamed up to stop a ring of smugglers trying to make off with ancient Ruritanian artifacts. Anders Brightman, the Bright Man, finalized the security preparations at the League of Nations, announcing all was ready for the arrival of Jana Ball, emissary from Atlantis, next week. Presto the Witch has apparently begun using the Hidden House, now located on the bloody red acre in the yards, as her home base, having been seen entering and leaving numerous times over the last week. Rock Harden, the adult film actor, not the hero, was arrested for drunk driving. Lady Lunar has received a message from the tracker from Titan that the reclusive old Martians are interested in communicating with the League of Nations. The girl with the key and Mando Church rooted out a voodoo cult in the silent swamp west of the city. Clayton Astounding, the Victorian Superman, was spotted canoodling with Glorioso in a tiny Baker's Leap Bistro. And finally, the quiet man silenced Rebel Yell. You've been listening to Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds were provided by Newsbeds.com. Wherever you found our podcast, please go back and leave a review if you would. And if you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Until next time, thanks for listening, and we hope you have a super day.